Hey guys, so this one is a 4.5 logarithmic properties. And so we have kind of three main properties that we're, we look at with um, logs. There's those ones in the last section. They, they show up a little bit, but these are kind of the three biggies. Um, so the first one is when we have two things multiplying in the argument of a log, we can write it as um, the sum of two separate logs and vice versa. When we have two things dividing in the argument of a log, we can write that as the difference of two separate logs. And when there is an exponent on the log, we can take that and bring it down front and write it as a coefficient. And then these two we saw in the last section, um, if the base and the argument are the same, it's just one, like log base 10 of 10 is what power do we raise 10 to get 10, so one. And log of one is gonna be zero for any base. A um, Couple other things that are helpful to remember <coughs> um, going into this section is x to the one half is the th same thing as a square root and in general x to the one over n is the nth root so like for instance if i have x to the one third that's the same thing as the third root of x um, and then x to the m over n that's probably really small so let me write that a little bit bigger um, i think of that one as, as x to the power over the root, because that's what those pieces really are. The numerator is the power, the bottom number is the root. Um, so you can just treat those as two separate things if we're in camera room. So this uh, this first example, this one is kind of interesting. So it's just to it's just to kind of get you used to a lot of these properties. They're kind of like little puzzles. Um, so we're trying to figure out which of the following are equivalent to log base b of five. So we're trying to see if we can make this thing look like that thing. So this first one, A, it has this coefficient, and up here, remember, if there's a coefficient, that means it's a power on the inside of the log, so I'm going to rewrite it that way. So good. log base B of 25 to the 1 half. And here, remember, I was saying 1 half is the same thing as square root. So this is log base B square root 25, and square root 25 can be simplified to log base B of 5. So this one we would say, yes, that is equivalent. Uh, for b over here, um, this one we have minus log base b of 25 plus log base b of 125. Um, written in that order, it's a little bit, it's uh, kind of confusing to see where to go. If you might want, if you want to pause this and play with it for a second, it's um, you'll you'll be pissed off when I show you what to do. Um, so the easiest way to look at this is just to flip flop the order. So if I write it log base b of um, 125 then minus log base b of 25 then it looks exactly like uh, property 2 up here <clears throat> and so then I can rewrite that as log base b 125 over 25 or uh, lo and behold 125 divided by 25 is log base b of 5 so again on this one we would say yes they are equivalent <coughs> And then for C, this one third, that's a gonna be a power. Well, it's a root in the form of power. So we get to the one third on the 125. And then remember that's the same thing as a cube root. And that is once again log base b of five. Um, this one's a kind of more straightforward subtraction, so it's going to go log base b of 40 over 8. Notice it's a single log here, it's not log over log, it's log of that stuff. And then that stuff makes log base b of 5. So let's see, this is an exponent, so we'll bring it inside. So we could go log base b root 5 to the negative 2. And then when I have a negative exponent, I can flip the fraction over, make it a positive. So that will make it log base b of root 5, you know, over 1. We don't need the 1, but just to kind of show the flip. And then squaring that, I get log base b, square root 5 squared makes 5. So that one also checks. Uh, this one, so when we're having addition, we would multiply these. 
So that would be log base b of 100 times 1 fourth. And that will actually be log base b of 25. So that's our first no. This was a yes. Uh, for g, uh, log base b of 2 plus log base b of 3. And so when um, we have that, it's multiplying, not adding. So remember, it's log base 2 of b of 2 times 3, or log base b of 6. So that one's a no. And then this one, this little mysterious negative right here, is like a negative 1. So if I bring that up as an exponent, I have log of 1 fifth to the negative 1 which is the same thing as log of 5 over 1 to the positive 1, which is log 5. Oops, dropped the B a long time ago, but pretend that's there. Um, and so that one is a yes. Okay, so this is, uh, next topic is expanding uh, using properties of logs. So they're going to ask you to write this as a sum or difference of logs, or expand the logarithm, um, depending on the wording of the question. So to me, the easiest way to look at these is not to do a bunch of steps um, whenever possible. I just realize um, because of our properties back here, let me grab that. So if things are in the numerator, they are adding. If things are in the denominator, they're subtracting. But what that means is anything that came from the denominator is going to have a negative in front of it. Um, and then anything that's in front of a log was a power. So if you just kind of put those three things together all at once, these are actually pretty friendly. Um, let me show you how it works on this one. So I'm supposed to write this as a sum or difference of logs or expand. Um, so I'm going to have one, since I have three things in the argument, they're all kind of multiplying or dividing, I'll have three logs. So anything that's an exponent is going to be a coefficient. If it comes from the numerator, it's going to be positive. And that's what this property um, up here is showing. So that's going to be, um, come down there with that, 2, and then log x. And then the y came from the denominator, and things from the denominator are negative. And that 3 is still going to be coefficient, so it's going to be minus 3 log y. And the z came from the denominator, so anything from the denominator, negative. So minus 4 log z. Another way of thinking of this is you could rewrite that as log x2y to the negative 3z to the negative 4, and that can kind of help you see why these have to be negative exponents or negative coefficients, because when these come down in front, they're, they're going to be negative. So the way that you enter the answers on these is um, they will give you a kind of a little template like this, and then you're just going to match up... Um, the coefficients, so the a here is like 2, so a is this 2, and then that's negative 3, and that one's the negative 4. Okay, these next few are just to uh, expand uh, the logarithm. So this one, it might be tempting not to split the 3 and the x, but they really are separate things because uh, they can be written as, you know, the, with a little multiply. So, um, versus this one, we can't really split that up because we don't have anything for adding or subtracting in the argument of a log. Um, but we do for multiplication or division. So this is going to be um, log of x minus 5. And then these are coming from the denominator, so it'll be minuses. So log minus log 3 minus log x. I think I wanted to see if I can simplify a little bit before I do um, too much more work with it. So we'll go ln, and then up top it looks like I can take a 6x out. That's going to leave x plus 3. And then downstairs it looks like I can take out another 6x. That's going to leave me x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then I can factor that a little bit further. Let's sneak over here, 6x, x plus 3, 6x, and let's see, multiplies the 3, adds to be 4, will be x plus 3, 
and x plus 1. So now if I cancel stuff, 6 is cancel out, x is cancel out, x plus 3 is cancel out. And so now I'm left with <coughs> natural log of 1 over x plus 1. And so that's just going to be um, natural log of 1 minus the natural log of x plus 1. But if you remember way back here, um, anytime we have the log, or it could be the natural log of 1, that's a 0. Because what power do I raise something to get 1, 0? And so this is really a zero. So then this simplifies down to just negative ln x plus one. Okay, and here the way that we deal with the root is to rewrite it. So I'm gonna use a fractional exponent. Remember square root is the same thing as one half. And that's gonna be two x minus five. In this I can't factor anything, so um, if I can't write it as a multiply, I'm pretty much stuck with what it is. And then expanding that, I'm going to get 2 and then ln x. And then we have a plus 1 half, because this is in the numerator. That's my exponent. ln and then x plus 5. And then it'd be subtract on this, so minus ln. And this is just to the first, so that's why there's nothing, there's just invisible one. 2x minus 5. Okay, so this next one, um, we got to do a little bit of algebra to get it simplified to where you can work with it. So I'm going to rewrite this as log 7 and then x to the 11. And then this 1 fourth, I'm going to just write as a fractional exponent. that's going to be to the one-fourth. And then I can run that through these parentheses. It doesn't affect the 11, but it affects these two. So that will be um, log 7 and then x to the 11. So that'll be a y to the third is one-fourth of 12. And then one fourth of two would be um, two fourths or one half. So z to the two times one fourth, and then cancel those in one half. And then expanding this, um, I'm going to have 11 log base seven, oops, that turned into a z, sorry, of x. And then the y is in the numerator, so that's going to be plus 3 log 7 y. And the z is downstairs, so minus 1 half log base 7 of z. Okay, so here, um, I again need to do some work in here to get so the x is together and um, see where I can get to. So. This, I think I'm going to just kind of take the argument out and not write log in all the parentheses each time just to kind of make it go a little bit quicker. So for a second, I'm just going to work on this inside part. And so the first thing I'm going to do is write this one, uh, this fifth root as a one-fifth. And then that helps me see what I do here is I can multiply that in. That'll give me x to the 4, y to the 7 x to the three-fifths, and y to the two-fifths. And so then the x's go with the x's, the y's go with the y's. <coughs> so four and three-fifths, and y to the seven and two-fifths. Um, so I'll show you two ways to do these. Um, so with this one, it's when we multiply, we add the exponents. So basically what we're having to do here is four plus three-fifths. And so um, I can write these both in terms of fifths, x to the four plus three-fifths. I can do a little five over five right there. That becomes 20 over five plus three-fifths makes 23-fifths. 
or an easier way of looking at it is if you think of this as f literally four and three fifths because we're going to add those so this is um, you can also just think of that as x to the four and three fifths we don't like mixed numbers and exponents but there's that rule where we can go five times four is 20 plus three makes 23 over five so one more time let me write that a little bit better four and three fifths x to the so four times five is 20 plus three makes 23 fifths. So that's a nice way to do it. So this one's x to the 23 fifths. And for the y now, I'm gonna think of this as y to the seven and two fifths. So five times seven is 35, plus two makes 37 fifths would be the exponent. And then once I have that, and now this is all in that log still, so then expanding this, I get 23 fifths log x plus 37 fifths log y. Okay, so these last few problems are kind of going the other direction. So we're giving an expanded log and we're asked to write as a single log. So basically we're just going backwards. Um, these are both additions, so we're gonna have log base three. Also, when it says write as a single log, you're only going to use the word log once in your answer. I'll show you down here where people mess that up a lot. Or here, they'll just write log um, x to the fifth, and then they'll go another log y squared instead of just plain y squared in the log. Um, so careful, just use single log and one log. So for entering the answers on these, um, I think they have it set up with the log in front of the box most of the time. And so you just kind of have to be aware that this might be here, so not to type the log in the box if this is the case. So here you would just type x5 and y squared. Uh, for this next one, we're going to have subtraction. So this is going to be, and what people do here that isn't right is log um, x to the 4, and then they go big line and another log underneath y to the 6th. And it's just a little line, so this this log is just a single log, and y to the sixth. For number ten, um, so for single log, we're gonna have x to the one half, and then this is negative, so it's downstairs, y to the fourth, and likewise with the z, z to the fourth. And then this last one, so this would go uh, log. And then big fraction bar. So this is going to be two. Uh, this is going to be to the power of two. And that's going to be over x squared minus nine. Um, but that simplifies a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to have log. This is, again, the squared is really um, x minus three just twice. And this one's x plus three x minus 3, and so there's our reduced form.